Welcome back to part five of this series. In this section, I'll discuss comparing uh, differences between the HD19 and HD38 assembly and saving your genome browser analyses using sessions, and finally generating figures for your manuscripts. Up until this point in the tutorial, I've used the HD38 assembly for simplicity, but if you remember, as I showed you in part four, HD19 is far more annotation tracks and data, and is still considered kind of the gold standard in the ref uh, research community. You may want to be able to understand differences between these assemblies, what has changed uh, as the assemblies have been updated, especially if there's a critical region that you that you care about, you need to know if anything has changed, and also how to convert the features and, their, and the numbering of genomic features between the two. So first let's talk about looking at differences between the assemblies. I'll go down to mapping and sequencing and turn on the HG19 diff track. So we're looking at HG38 here, and I'll turn this on full and say refresh. Okay, now you can see we have a new track here called contigs new to H, uh, HG38, not carried forward from HG19. So let me zoom out. Now this track contains some information. You can see that there are contigs that contain differences between the two assemblies. For example, if we click through on one of them, you can see that different portions of this contig were used in the construction of HD38 and HD19 because it is colored gold, and the colors and their scores and meanings are given here under the description. So we'll zoom out one more time, and now you can see there's a lot of information about differences in the contigs that have been used to create HD38 and update it from HD19. And so this is important if there are critical regions that you're really interested in and you need to know what changed, if anything. This is one way you can find out. Now I'm going to turn off that track. And now I just want to talk about how to convert a list of features in one assembly to another. To do that, you go to Tools, Lift Over. Now in Liftover, you can see you have original genome and original assembly, and new genome and new assembly. And as it says at the top, not every type of conversion is possible, but one of the most common ones that you might be wanting to do is go from HD38 to HD19 or vice versa. Now there are some options that we're not going to get into right now, and you paste your data in here in what's called bed format. I'm going to click through and describe a little bit about bed format. Bed format is a pretty simple format. It has three required fields, chromosome, number, and then a start and end position. And then there are nine additional fields that we don't need to worry about right now. But I'm going to grab a, an example from this page, and I'm going to copy it and go back to the liftover tool and paste. And this is the format that you would paste your features in, and then I'll say submit. Now you can see under results it says successfully converted nine records, and if you were to click through to that it would download a bed file that contains the new positions updated between assemblies of your genomic features of interest. Okay, so now I want to talk about saving your work. If you've done a lot of work turning on a large variety of tracks and you're looking at some feature that you're interested in and you set it all up the way you want to, you don't want to just close the browser and come back and have to do it all over again later. So an easy way to get around this is to go to my data and say click on sessions and here you can create an account uh, I've already created one, so I'll log in. Now under session management, you can see that I've created a session called Mini Course Part 4, and what this lets me do is either go right to it in the browser, so I'll click through to that. Now you can see there's a custom display and zoom level and position and tracks that are on that I've set up specifically as an example here. If you wanted to share this with others you could say send to email and enter an email address and a link that would take other people to that same view would be emailed to them. 
So this is a way to both save your own work and share sessions with your colleagues. Finally, I want to talk about creating figures. So let's go back to the browser and zoom in a couple of times. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to create a figure of this region for a paper. I can go to View and select PDF Postscript. Then I have a range of options that include download the current browser graphic in PDF, download the current chromosome ideogram in PDF, or Postscript for both of those. So if I say right click on that and open it in a new tab, you'll see that what I get is a very nice, very crisp PDF image of that browser window with very clean text for publication. So that's all for part five. That is the end of the basic introduction series. There is also one other video that is in the, the advanced series where I'll talk about using the table browser. So please come back for that video and uh, thanks for watching.